This is a lessons learned from a lifter development program. And people say, well, how in the world do you have already lessons learned? You don't have a program yet. And I said, well, the idea of writing lessons learned is not for you, not for your program. It's for the next generation. It's the next guy after you. It starts to germinate a few ideas to take care of a real program. Power density and efficiency and all the good things you hear about Thorium, about Lifter, about these kinds of technologies. General public, it's more the inherent safety and then the economics. And the biggest thing with the economics is a lot of times people don't do a good job. Uh, they get involved with the, um, uh, the coolness of the technology or the, the ultimate end goal of what it will be, like a fusion. And, and the economics really drive things early on and what you're going to do, what are you going to do in a prototype, what do you need to prove first those kinds of things. The first thing the lessons learned and surprising all the kind it's education. Anytime you build a technology program, I think we know that we're here to do that and we're doing that in Congress, we're doing that uh, to the public. But in the project that will remain nameless that I'm working on now, I'm chief engineer, the first thing we have is a, a book about three inches thick that's the 101 course. It tells you everything about the history, why and how, you know, what does the system work like. The critics said it couldn't be done because they know, this has been a 10-year program that, that they're working on, or almost 15, you've got to have that motivation to go beyond what people say can be done. I think the Thorium community sees that. I threw in this one, uh, the terabyte, because it's amazing how small things get done. You know, in, in, the, in the electronics world, we take it for granted now. But if I said that, you know, 10 years ago, people would say, you're crazy, it'll never happen. In NASA, before they went to the moon, before they knew how they would go to the moon, they have all kinds of ideas of how do you do this, how do you solve that problem, how do you do it in, in less than 10 years. And, and this engineer, John Haltwork, is considered the, the guy who championed it. There was a lot of engineers who did a lot of work, a lot of data, that said lunar orbit rendezvous, this LOR, was the way to go. Now we all know that's the way it went, and it was successful, but he took a lot of hours for a number of years. They were literally throwing him out of headquarters saying, shut up. It's too dangerous. You are absolutely crazy. And here's one of the quotes. His figures lie, he doesn't know what he's talking about. And we certainly have gotten that, and I'm sure a lot of people in the room are starting to have gotten those arrows. Um, so a little bit of, uh, of the education to keep the people uh, excited about it. And the next thing is motivation. The other thing that was common to almost all the lessons learned is Sir Alfred Clark's three laws. They apply somewhat to Lifter or to a Thorium. I don't think it's quite magical. Fusion is magical. If we can make that happen, okay, we can grasp that, it would be magical. Thorium actually is a little bit more, you know, down to earth and, and uh, you know, uh, hardcore, you know, uh, big thick tire, uh, you know, uh, kind of monster uh, vehicle. You don't necessarily need to have new physics, uh, you know, to make it work. So some of these apply, at least to the outside they apply, but to people who know, if you go to the liquid form, if you force yourself to make that technology commitment, that would be uh, the key. 50 years from now, people go, oh, of course that's the answer. You don't believe it now. All right, what you might need, well, you need a reactor, okay, you need a power system. Some of the little things, especially on the, the program I'm working right now, lessons learned, pay attention to ground support equipment. You want to be able to take the fluid in and out. Even if you think the envisioned thing is a closed system, like a, a refrigerator. Nowadays, we, we buy a refrigerator, the whole thing's enclosed, encapsulated. Once it's built, it's done. You never mess with it, OK? Um, if it leaks, you throw it away, all right? We can't have that. The first time they built a refrigerator, they didn't think that way. That came after the prototype. That came after the development. You gotta be able to take that fluid in and out. You gotta be able to examine it. You gotta look for the contaminations that are gonna drive you crazy. And then you find out it's the supplier. You know, he used a cleaner in the tank that was storing, I'm using lessons learned here. It entered into your material. And it'll, you know, like I said, you gotta be able to find that out, find it out quickly, or your program looks like, oh, you must have a technology problem when it's a vendor or supply problem. Safety critical software, we don't have as much of a problem with that. But a reactor normally has safety critical software. So do our, our military planes today. Uh, a lot of them are fly by wire. It's extremely expensive to build and really expensive to test, okay? Because you have to absolutely be sure that it works. If you can stay away from that, um, again, in the, the present lesson learned, uh, you know, they don't have any safety critical software, okay, on, on the weapon system I work on. And it's completely automated. So once you say engage, it can do whatever it wants to. That's amazing and it still keeps the people on board uh, safe as well as uh, 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 what you're targeting. And the corollary is actually the next slide will we'll cover this too, um, is um, the health and status.
In the long run, this thorium and, and a reactor like this lifter type thing shouldn't have a lot of, of diagnostics. But in order to prove that it's safe, in order to prove that all the claims we're, we're claiming today, you're going to have to have a lot of data. Where does that data come from? From your diagnostics uh, <coughs> hardware. What I would envision and, and lessons learned on something like this is that you have not only maybe two operators in a, uh, let's say this is a field mobile unit, uh, you know, military type. You expect two operators there. They have certain things they're looking at. What you do is you have another set behind them during your development phase, which all your physicists and engineers are behind them. And they have 10 times the amount of diagnostics. So when the operator says, I see this, and I turn this knob, you actually see what the whole system is doing, and you can analyze that. I think you're going to need that early on. And this would be the first thing you do, a mechanical working model. Something's not nuclear, heated through uh, electrical and or gas, more than likely. And then compare that to CFD modeling. I think the neutronics codes, and correct me if I'm wrong, are pretty well established. And I think we're going to find that that is not going to be the tall pole in the tent. It may actually be going from this model and getting a good CFD. Uh, I do a lot of uh, work with, with uh, fluids and, and high temperatures, and uh, people are not as uh, able to model that as, as easily. Uh, and then the third item would be a diagnostic test prototype, which I was talking about. This is where you have a reactor. This is where you have a lot of diagnostics, and you're looking at what the operators are doing and reacting. Once you've done those three, that's your, your initial run-up. You would build a prototype and then give it to a customer uh, like the military. It's much harder on a commercial uh, uh, to go kick the tires, if you will. Take it out to the field and tell you all the problems and see if they like to buy it, okay? Uh, but then you have, if they find a problem, you have this stuff right here that immediately goes back and reiterates. Uh, do I have a question here? Yeah. What is CFD? Computational fluid dynamics. It's your computer models. A lot of people call uh, DSIL, or that's you utilized often in uh, managing risk. The um, Pathfinder, okay, starting on things early. Uh, one of the things they did uh, in the program that, that I'm working on, uh, they were going to put a weapon system on 747. They flew around the world six times in, in six weeks uh, with diagnostics on a regular 747. Okay. You may want to start thinking about what kind of tests you need to do. If you're going to go to a site and build this thing, you may want background data okay, on what radiation is in the, the air and on the ground and things like that, because you need that background later. And if you don't have a year worth of, of data, then it gets questionable. Uh, did you add something or didn't you or is it a phenomenon with the weather or you know something else going on? Finish your risk data assessment uh, before you make your decision and too many programs of lessons learned is they almost were done with the data you know on a risk uh, you know a path that they were taking but they went ahead and made a decision because they had to go programmatically do that and what they found out was, of course, the, you know, there was some problem that propped up. Mobility means vibration issues. Again, very near and dear to my heart. Everything from basic connectors to uh, diagnostic wiring. A lot of video. You know, people forget that and you go, well, how am I going to video? Make sure you have ports in your diagnostics so you can see this flow of this reactor and the power system and the turbine, uh, uh, you know, the Brayton cycle. Um, if you use COTS, okay, uh, commercial off-the-shelf items, they're not going to be exactly what you want, okay? And they're not going to laugh as much, last as long as you want. So you design something, you pick something off, two years later you're operating the thing finally. You say, ah, it doesn't work or it broke. I want to buy a new one. And the vendor says, well, I have this new updated one that's much smaller. And you go, it doesn't fit. And it doesn't go with the rest of my uh, analysis that I had done, even if it's smaller, lighter, faster, cheaper. Okay, it sometimes can cause a big problem. So COTS is another lessons learned as you go through this. Sometimes that's not the best way to go. Um, be judicious in that. Independent review team, an IRT, having one early start up with you and stay the life of the program is a huge savings in the long run. Kind of like, well, we don't need an a independent review. We haven't done anything yet. But what they will do is when you do run into a problem, okay, or a path you have to make a choice at, um, you didn't make your milestone you promised everybody. Um, they will not only advocate for you, but they have all the background knowledge. So you bring them back in for a couple of days. That's been invaluable to, to most of these large programs. Um, we should be looking for that. It's going to be hard with the Thorium. There's not a lot of folks there, uh, but you can pick and choose to experience the uh, chemists and, and physicists and, and people that have been working maybe in this room 
uh, who are a little senior will, will be on that. So uh, um, hire believers, not mercenaries. Um, in a technology program, you're going to run into problems. You've got to have somebody who's really going to stay up all night and figure out uh, how to make that work. Never let a known defect be deferred. <laughs> it always bites you if you don't fix it. So fix it, do the right engineering. Uh, don't say, well, it worked last time, like the shuttle. It worked 50 times, you know, but you know you have a known defect. That's a classic mistake. Never tolerate an unexplained mystery in any test uh, data. It always shows up. And the last one uh, actually was written in some of the, uh, what do you call it, uh, lessons learned, uh, pray a lot. And uh, it is a lot of hard work, but it's a lot of fun on, on the program. But you're going to have to get the team together and, uh, and motivate them, educate them, and, uh, and then tackle the problems as they, they see fit. So I hope that was good enough on the big overview. And uh,